Hello and welcome. Just a quick word to say I have learned something about video editing. So you're about to see my live attempt at the round, but then at the end, I'm also going to add in uh, a little bit of explanation of some of the crazier things that I did while I was in a rush. So uh, yeah, if, if anything looks totally wacky and confusing, feel free to jump back, uh, jump along to the end of the video. I'll put the timestamps in the, in the video description so you can jump through that if you need to. And let's go. Hello and welcome. I'm going to record my live attempt at Road to Las Vegas Battle 9. Usual caveats for a live attempt. One, I might get something wrong. Uh, always good chance. Uh, if I do, I'll uh, I'll probably post something in the video description to explain what went wrong or how to fix it. Uh, and second caveat is my screen capture area is a bit smaller than my full screen. Uh, so I may be working outside uh, the bit that gets recorded, but you can always see what's going on up in the formula bar. Um, I did watch the uh, the case video. Uh, I've prepared one quick thing aside from my usual lambdas for that, which is just based on uh, a map area MP here that I just mocked up quickly. Uh, I've set something up to list all the non-empty spaces in the map, the addresses of those, the row column references uh, in the kind of, you know, a thousand times the row number plus the column number or whatever. Um, and then calculate the distances between every pair of cities, because that seems like it might be relevant. Uh, but now that I've set that up, I need to delete the map name so that I can import this and then make it work. All right, that's all I've got time for in the way of background chit-chat, so I'm going to start my timer, start the battle, download the file, and let's dive on in. Come on, there we go. Bring it back over here and open up. And let's just import this before I forget. And create a kind of shut that down. And we'll go ahead and name this area MP. And then hopefully those formulas will start working. And they do, I think. Where is some, I'm missing some labels? Oh, what? What's going on here? Centerberg, yeah. Oh, uh, I guess maybe these are not blanks. Uh, oh, that's kind of annoying. Okay, uh, just, um, if this equals blank, then an A, otherwise C54. And go to special constants errors and delete them. Uh, hello, delete them. What the? Oh god, it's freezing. That's not okay. There we go. Now that's working. All right. So <laughs> let's actually read what's going on. <sighs> okay, I think I have an idea of that from the, the setup. So just which city has the highest average household income? Uh, I'm just going to go look it up. Oh, and let's make this a table. I'm a bit all over the place today. Uh, average household income, just want to know the max, and that is Oilboro. Which state has the most cities? Okay, uh, equals group by state, state rows. And of course, it's Excel state. Which row in the Excel state map has the highest population? Wait, oh, in the, got it, got it, got it. Uh, was by row x lookup mp in hmm, where we going? Uh, city name returning from population otherwise zero sum and and it is row two just the city of center bend all by itself okay that makes me nervous, but fine. It is what it is. Row 2. Total population of all cities that are not in Excel state. That's pretty easy. 2 yeah. Okay, and on the... Uh, yeah, okay. Um, that's the one that said it involves colors. What is the average income per capita across cities vertically or horizontally touching a water tile? Uh, okay. I'll come back to that. All right. 
So, what is, uh, sorry, I'm just going to name this table. Uh, T, because I find that easier. And then state population num house uh, le birth le twenty one le sixty. Okay, so what is the question? Uh, how many households are there in each of the? Okay, so some ifs. Uh, T num house where T state is this. Uh, not that, but I want to take this. Okay, what is the life expectancy in each of the cities below at the stated age? Okay, fine. Uh, so I guess let's just make this birth. 21. 60. Ah. 60. <clears throat> okay, so it's going to be... Wait, what? Oh, in months, rounded to the year. Oh, weird. All right, fine. So it's going to be index T... Uh, by x match this against t city and x match mm, go away go away go away go away go away sorry I must have closed it god it's shouting at me so much uh, and then x match this against t headers uh, and then times 12 oops what that's concerning oh maybe I need to Convert that to text. Yes, I do. Okay, and then round to the nearest integer, zero. 882 is good. All right, so that seems to be working. Let's go plop that in. Level three, for each city, work out the average income per capita per person. All right, fine. Uh, so let's just do X look up this in T uh, city, returning from T. I'm interested in the population number of houses and the, yes. So from population to, it's probably something that I should calculate in the table, really. So it's going to be this uh, divided by this multiplied by this, I think. Yes. And then we want to round to the nearest integer. Okay, so that's in the range, that's in the range, and that's in the range, so I think we're good. And that's that. Okay, level four. Four and six figure cities uh, can be completely defined. We define a six figure city as a city where the average household income is in six figures. And the average income per person is four figures or less. Okay. How many people per 100,000 live? Okay, fine. So, uh, average uh, purse income, average income per person is going to be household income uh, divided by the number of, sorry, household income times the number of households is going to give the total income divided by population. I'm going to give that and just quickly double check one of these. Oilbury 74522, yes. Okay, and so then. Six figure state is households. Okay, so I guess I want just six or four fig. So it's going to be or uh, this has to be greater than one. Sorry, no, greater than what? No, greater than hundred thousand. Or uh, the personal has to be less than. Okay. So then. State of Montana has one six-figure city, no four-figure cities. Let's see if we agree with that. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, okay, fine. Therefore, the population of... Okay. Oh, per hundred. Okay, fine. So it's going to be some ifs. T population, where T state is this, and T uh, 6 over 4 fig is true, divided by the same thing, uh, but without the last condition, and then multiply by, what is it, per, I wish there was a comma there, I think that's 100,000, 
and it is, and we want to round to the nearest integer we find. Uh, so in there, make flex. Okay, so two two seven yes, uh, yes, and uh, yes. Fine. Okay, that's level four. Level five. How far apart is each pair of cities? Okay. Uh, oh, but we got to do it in units. All right, fine. So <clears throat> I think that I can first just index my handy dandy table here. Lock uh, my x match this against uh, this lock and x match the other against the same thing. Uh, we should put that on. So h. Okay, I think I just missed a closing bracket. So let's close. Okay, and that's. Okay, so times a thousand. That is three, four, three, six, six. Good, that matches. <clears throat> so then, what? These unit conversions, so this is the number of meters and I want to kilometers. Okay, fine, so it's going to be that. Divided by x lookup. This in here. Lock returning from here. Lock. I think that's it. Uh, wait, there's almost certainly a round. Yes, round to the nearest integer. Fine. That's one where the pre-work definitely paid off. Okay, so 20, 21,000, what? Okay, yeah, sorry, because it's in feet. That makes sense. Uh, 21,000, yes. 21, yes, okay, fine. <clears throat> That's level five. Okay, level six. There's a population density in each box of the Excel state map. Uh, okay, fine. Um, so let's, let's just text split this by column delimiter is that and row delimiter is that, I think. Mm, nope, wait, sorry. That's a colon, not a semicolon. So start row, start call, end row, end call. Fine. Um, So it's going to be one thing. Each box is defined by the start and row ends and columns. The box includes the start and end cells. Work out the total population of all cities in the box divided by the number of map squares in the box. Okay. So I want index. Uh, so I can't just do MP. So I can do index the whole sheet by the start row and the start call. And uh, just, I hate this case getting added, so get rid of that. Uh, and then, the same thing, but for the ending, so it's gonna be 251, 251. That'll give me an area. Yes, oh, now, heat. Okay, so then I need that intersection with MP. Can I do that? I can do that, that's cool. Uh, all right, so then let's say let A, let A be all that stuff. And just quickly check, I can do that and all that, I can. Uh, so I want sum of X lookup A in T city, returning from t population, um, otherwise zero. And I want to divide that by, I'm going to say count a of a. No, okay. So let's break it down one piece at a time, get rid of this. So center bend, total population is what? At high view at row six, column four. What is going on here? Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I think. Okay, we're supposed to be going off these numbers here, not the numbers. Okay, so that, I think that means I need to fix one of my bonus questions, but it also makes this part easier. So I just replace this with MP, replace this with MP. 
uh, can get rid of the intersection. Okay, so now we're back to having two cities, fine. So then I need some effects look up A in T city, returning from T, and let's see, T population. Uh, that's, sorry, otherwise zero. That gives me that good, divided by count A of A. No, sorry, I think it's not counting them. Yeah, it's not. Okay, so then divided by rows of A, divided by columns of A. And that is right. Uh, so then we just need round zero. And then the question is just how can I... Uh, so I guess let's go two row, and then I can flatten this. And then I just need to point this, not there, but here. Six and five. Nine, four, and five. Yes, I've rounded it already, so that's good. Uh, so then I just need to copy these in. So, yes, yes, and yes. Okay. Ooh, I'm getting nervous now. All right, level seven. In this question, oh my god, that's a lot of words. <laughs> I'm going to have birth within a certain straight line distance of a cell specified as a what? Okay, straight line distance will be calculated in the same way as in level five. What? So, yikes. Uh, for instance, this, 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 and this would all be included. Would not be included. Fine. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is just get center row, center column, and distance. Okay, so... So the max of these is 10. So what I need is... I think I want abs of sequence 21 minus 11 will give me, yes, uh, so let A be that, uh, B V 2 row A, then I want square root of A squared plus B squared. And that is my distance from the center, and then I need to know if that's less than or equal to that. So that's the ones that I want, but now how am I going to do that centered on here? <laughs> All right. um, okay, so... Let's say if that, then I want A times 1000 plus B. Uh, sorry. Mm. Yes, otherwise, NA. What do you. Mm. All right. So these are the ways. Ah, but no, not the absolute part. Shoot. Okay. Uh, get rid of the absolute for a second. Actually, I don't even need the absolute, do I? Because it's getting squared. So that's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Ha, ah, you're hilarious. Uh, no, something went wrong there. Oh, no, these just got bigger. So these are the directions in which I can go from the starting cell. <sighs> then I want to call that. Uh, comma three. These are all the directions I can go from the starting cell. Uh, then I need text split of this by comma times one. Then I need this times 1000 plus this. Then I need x look up this plus this in the list of locations returning from the list of cities. And that should mostly be blank, and then we can two call it to get rid of. So, do I have four cities in range? Sunville, Middle Junction, Northwood, and Waterbury. Yes! Sweet. Okay. So now what the heck do I want to do with them? 
I want to get the life expectancy at birth, I want to get the populations, and I want to weighted average them. Okay. So again, first let's just grab this. Uh, so let mm, yours be all that nonsense. I'm just trying to keep it all in a let so that I can uh, get away with things. Uh, so times make that 1001 sum. Okay, uh, so then let uh, dearest be that, uh, adds be this plus dearest, and then we're going to x look up <coughs> adds in whatever that thing was. I'll go grab that because I didn't name them, which I probably should have, but never mind. Uh, in here. that, rid of that, and that gives me that, which works, and then I need to two call that zero. So then sits for cities, to call all of that stuff, zero, no, not zero, sorry, three. Yep. Sorry. Maybe this, no, what? Oh, shoot, what's going on here? Oh, sorry, yeah, and then I need to output something, so let's go with sits. <coughs> Okay, then we need to um, pops. We can be x lookup sits in t city returning from t pop, uh, and uh, le ab life expectancy of birth can be x lookup sits in t city returning from t birth, and then I want sum of uh, pop times LAB divided by a sum of pop. 78.97, oh, what? Oh, are we back to month again? 78.97, yes, okay, sweet. Uh, all that nonsense times 12, round to the nearest whole number, and we're good. Oh, we've got some calcs in here. Crap, what's going on? Okay, from 744 in a range of 2. So row 7, column 44. I'm guessing that means there's just nothing there. Row 7, 44. Yeah, there's nothing in range. Fine. So I guess that means 0. Uh, it's not. does not say what to do if there are no cities in range. Oh, sorry, here we are. Nobody lives. Answer zero. Fine. If error, uh, zero. Okay. So now we got one bonus question. Oh no, I have to fix two bonus questions first, don't I? Because there was a row. Which city has the highest average household income? Which state has that? In a, it was not that. It was not that. Which row has the highest population? Uh, and I no, I did that. I think I answered that the right way. Let's just quickly check. I answered two and not four, which is the row in the grid and not the row in the thing. Yes, fine, I think that's okay. Bonus question four, total, yes, that's fine. <clears throat> okay, so what is the average income per capita across the cities? Blah, 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 blah. Not touching a water tile, fine. Vertically or horizontally, not diagonally, okay. So I think what I can do is, um, let's just make it, mm, no, I don't wanna make a copy. Uh, okay, so we wanna find, uh, sorry, first let's just get that color fill, more colors. Okay, then I'm going to select the map, and I want to find uh, yeah, format, more colors, custom. Okay, and replace with W, replace all. <clears throat> okay, so now... I've got a bunch of W's in here, I just need to figure out what is close to a water. So, uh, so I want to sum, I need this to be equal to 1 for a horizontal distance, <clears throat> and I need this to be equal to W for water. Lock equals W. So those are the cities. 
No, no, what is the question about them? Got, oh, sorry, drop the waters themselves. So we got seven cities. What's the question? What is the average income per capita across the cities vertically or touching water tile? Okay, fine. So these are my cities. Then I need X look up this. This in T cities, returning from T personal income, income per capita. Uh, then I need the same thing for the population. And I assume I'm taking a weighted average, but let's quickly check that. Um, that's the result for Yes, weighting by the population. Fine, good. So then by population, uh, pop. So it's going to be some of this uh, times this over some of this. Okay. Uh, all right, that's it. I'm going to hit submit with an email in my file. Uh, Okay, so here we are at the end of the video, uh, and I have watched the live stream, so I found out, hooray, uh, I did get the answers right, uh, pretty happy with that. Uh, just thought I would come back and do a quick explanation of one or two of the crazier things uh, that I did. Uh, and now I'm starting to forget them all, so let's just see. that This, this one was a sum of, pretty straightforward. Uh, this one was just an index match match. Not saying it's straightforward for everyone, but uh, if you're watching this and trying to learn wacky things, then probably straightforward to you. Okay. Oh yeah, so this one I actually briefly considered, but then shied away from using the pivot by for uh, so for level four, which was about four and six figure cities and the the proportion of the population that lives in them. So I think I could have done pivot by the row fields would have been are we doing cities or states? I don't remember states. So the row fields would have been the states, uh, the column fields would have been whether it's four or six figure population or not. Uh, and then, uh, where, what were we doing? <laughs> uh, the percent of the population, right? Yes. So then you would have been summing the population. So that would give you by state, this is how much of the population is not in those kinds of cities, how much of the population is in those kinds of cities. You could wrap this you know, straight into a um, straight into a let, but since it's small, you can say, okay, this is the population that lives in those cities divided by the total population times 10 to the power of 5, I think it was per 100,000. Uh, copy down. Uh, oh, one of them errors out because I guess that's a blank and not a zero, so let's just do if error. <clears throat> so that would have been another way to do it, uh, but, you know, when you're in a rush, you got to Think about what you know. So two two sum ifs is definitely less elegant, uh, and solving it you know for each one individually rather than a kind of general solution for every state here. But anyway, like I said, in the moment you got to go with what works. Uh, okay, so then this one. Oh yeah. So let me explain the pre work I did. So I I briefly mentioned at the start. I watched the video that said there was going to be a map uh, a map like this uh, that had various different. Um, locations on it and that we were going to be interested in distance between locations. So what I prepared was uh, I set something up with you know just a very very simple named range called MP for map here with just a handful of data points in it. Um, then I did a two call of that with three to flatten it out. Um, so in other words just just list the cities now there's a lot more because we've added in a bunch of water but whatever um, just list the cities I ran into a slight wobble with that because it turned out that these were not uh, the blanks here were not actually blanks they were like empty strings or something like that um, so that was why at the start I had to had to figure out a way to fix that so what I did was copy value pasted down here and then up here I put a formula that said if it's blank na otherwise uh, give me the value, and then I copy value pasted that, and then did a go to special to errors, and then hit delete, so that I would have true blanks wherever there wasn't a city, so that this would would actually act like a filter. Um, other ways you could have done that, like you could have just said filter it on something, but anyway, that's how I did it. Uh, then I have this kind of predefined lambda, uh, which I'll just show you quickly, uh, which just gives you the addresses of a range. So you point it to the range B6 to D8, and it says, okay, there's B6, C6, D6, B7, C7, D7, D8, C8, D8. So you point that at the map. You say, if the map is non-blank, give me the address. Otherwise, give me an error. 
and then you use two calls option. So here we're saying ignore blanks, but here we're saying you, I can't I can't say make this blank because a formula can never return a blank in that sense, like a zero or an empty string or something is is not um, is not a blank that will be ignored. But two call can also ignore errors. So here I just said if uh, if the city is blank then give me an error, otherwise give me the address, and then to call ignoring errors. So then you get the address of each of these cities. So just for example, Oilbury should be in X6. It's just, and yet there we are, in Oilbury in X6. Uh, and then I've got another one uh, that is row column, uh, and that just assigns indexes within a range where uh, the, the top left cell is 1001, and then as you go across columns, you add one, and as you go down rows, you add a thousand. Uh, this does technically have an optional argument. Um, if I needed to make, I don't know, the row multiple be 10 or something, uh, but mostly, like m most of the maps are small enough that a thousand is useful. The reason that it's that it's a thousand as opposed to just um, as opposed to just like the number of rows here so that it would go you know 1 to 50 and then restart here on 51 to 100 and so on is because so the, the whole idea of this is to compress a row and a column into a single variable and then then you can flatten it like this but then you can also add directions to it so if you want to think about like the cell above uh, a given reference that you subtract a thousand if you want to think about the cell below you add a thousand if you want to think about the one above and to the left you'd say minus a, uh, minus 1001, or, you know, above and to the right would be minus 999, that kind of thing. Um, so you can you can handle directions pretty easily. And the reason to have it not be dense is so that going left from here should not be the equivalent of wrapping around here. It should it should give you a point that doesn't exist. Uh, and then you can use, well, I'll, I'll show you more of that when I get to explaining level seven. So anyway, then uh, I just uh, mirrored the list of cities here. I'll explain why I added the water later, but that, if you watched the video, you'll know. But anyway, so here then I said, let A be this list of numbers. Uh, so the row number is, so just like you take whatever row number seven and column number 13, you put them together by saying this times 1000 plus this. You can also take them back apart again by saying int of this over 1000 uh, and this uh, mod this 1000. Uh, I should say, by the way, this this whole kind of wacky idea. Uh, I don't. I think I had possibly seen it or thought of it myself, but like the full potential of it, I had not appreciated until I saw some of the crazy things Bo Ridabon, Excel Wizard, did with it in his videos. He is the grandfather of uh, of this method. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so I calculate the list of rows, the list of columns, uh, and then we're just going to get. So we're going to flatten that out into a row and have it go down a column. So in other words, for each of the cities going along the top, we have the row number and going down here, we have the row number. Take the difference of that and square it. Do the same thing with the columns and then take the square root. And that gives you the distance between every pair of cities. So whatever, from uh, from Northland to Plainsbury is 18. And I guess they must be on the same. Oh yeah, here they are. They're on the same level to have an exact whole number. So let's look at Northland to Heiberg, for example. Uh, Heiberg is here, and you get 17.11. So you, in other words, it's like very slightly closer than here. Uh, sorry, very slightly further away than here from Northland, uh, because you're shifting down a little. So that makes sense. So I just kind of checked all that was working. And then when time started, I copied this sheet in uh, sorry, a after I had tested, I deleted the named range MP from here, copied it in, applied the name MP here, had to do a little debugging because, like I said, they weren't blank, but then I had a grid that was basically 90% of the solution to level 5. So then I could just uh, use an index to grab that, and then, you know, that was in in squares, which are each 1,000 meters. This lookup table was given in meters, so you just convert it into meters, then divide by the, the unit there. Level six. Mm. So there's an interesting little twist here, uh, the, the way that I went wrong at the start of level six, which is um, so there's always a, a kind of tricky thing here of do you start your map in A1? If you look at some of the older MEWC questions, the map would usually start in A1 and the labels might be like below and to the right instead of, you know, 
ab uh, above and to the left as you might kind of expect to find them. But then if you shift it down, then you know this is row three in the grid, but it's the first row of the map. So do you think of it as one? Do you think of it as three? They went through a phase of having you know, this numbering would start from three so that it would align to where it was in the grid, but it still, you know, causes issues if you insert rows or insert columns or anything like that. Um, so I initially interpreted this as we needed to start in row two of the grid, which is here, which is not part of the map, and then go down to row six uh, and then constrain that somehow. Uh, and luckily for me, it became apparent when I did the example, I, I think that gave me an area that was like, this, uh, but it was supposed to be like this or something like that. Anyway, the, the point is that this town was in the difference. And so, you know, the, the example laid it out very clearly, like you should have these two towns and this is the population of each one. Like it, it this case did a great job. Like it's slightly intimidating. And I saw a lot of people commenting in the, in the live chat of like, whoa, there's so much text, but actually I find this super helpful. Like you don't need to read this at first. You just need to kind of follow the instructions, but then if you get into debug mode, being able to go through, this is exactly what you should find at each step is, is super helpful. Uh, and I think reduces the amount of time people spend being lost. Um, the additional little twist is that if you have to go, you know, if you have a reference that could be outside the map, then you have to think of how to make it respect boundaries. Um, and so just a, a small handy trick for that is that you can use the intersection operator. So let's say that I did my index trick and it came up with this. If I do that space MP, it gives me the intersection of those two. So the if you look, the reference that I'm pointing to has seven rows, uh, but only five of them come through because only five of them overlap with the map. So it's giving me the kind of intersection of these two boxes. So that was how I, um, when I started off with, with this referring to the whole map tab rather than just the MP range, uh, I then intersected it with the map to get a sort of boundary respecting version. But anyway, that turned out not to be the right thing, but just thought that was uh, worth mentioning. Uh, maybe somebody will ask a question later where you do have to do that. All right, then level seven. I don't know that I did this the best way, honestly. I think I think it would probably have been easier actually to say, let's just convert this into, so whatever, we've got 23017. Uh, and then we could calculate the distance from that to each of the coordinates I had assigned to the list of cities, um, and then just filter for which cities are within range. Um, I think that was probably the smarter way to do this, but the way I opted to do it instead, and I, I, this is the main reason that I wanted to record a sort of after section, because I, I don't think I explained this much while I was doing it, uh, and the formula is certainly a beast, although it's easier to understand when you see it build up. But anyway, um, the, the thought process here, the key piece of it was this, um, which is sequence, sequence 21 minus 11. And the reason for, uh, for 21 and 11 is the biggest distance is 10. Uh, and I, I checked that first. Um, if, if the biggest distance had been 100, well, I guess it couldn't be because the map only goes 50 across. But anyway, if the biggest distance had been something much bigger, I would probably have shied more away from this and been more tempted to work out and sort of filter this list by the distances might have been a smarter approach anyway. But, so this gives you, uh, you know, a, a zero in the middle and then minus one up to minus 10 above and one up to 10 below. Um, so then you take that and well, let's just grab this whole thing. Um, I guess the first thing I'm gonna do is just format this a little more nicely, uh, make it vaguely readable. And then we can break down what the different pieces of it do. Uh, boom, and boom, okay. Uh, and now the other piece that I didn't do here that I do always recommend doing is name your last step out. I say I always recommend doing, I throw a lot of best practices out the window when I'm in a hurry. But, so now we've got something a little more structured. So A is just that exactly like I showed you. B is that flattened out to a column. Uh, and then if I do uh, A, well, if I do absolute value of A plus absolute value of B, uh, that, well, actually, sorry, let's just do absolute value of A, gives you the distance from the middle, uh, and if I do plus absolute value of B, that gives you, like if you were doing sort of taxi cab distance, uh, so that, you know, this is one step, and this is one step, and this is one step, and this is one step, then that would give you the distance from the center. Instead, what you need to do is, 
is this square root of a squared plus b squared. That is the Pythagorean distance from the center. Uh, so let's just do a quick... Uh, some of these are so ugly. All right. Kind of the wrong way around. Actually, it should probably be green in the middle. But anyway, you can see that you've got the sort of uh, the roughly circular distance. Some of my rows here seem to be or columns or different shapes. But anyway, you get the idea. So that is that is the distance. And then we're interested in, is that within range? So I compare that to the maximum distance. Um, incidentally, this says less than or equal to. I did not uh, actually pay attention to that. Although, yeah, no, that, that probably can make a difference. I did notice I skimmed back through the video just to refresh my memory on what I had done because it was all a bit of a blur. I did notice that on... This question, six or four fig, I used greater than here instead of greater than or equal to. Uh, so luckily there was none with exactly 100,000, uh, otherwise I would have got that wrong, because it did say, as is appropriate for the definition of six figure, uh, that it had to be 100,000 or more, not greater than 100,000. But anyway, that's an aside. Uh, okay, so then you get the distance, uh, and then you can say, uh, if that distance is less than or equal to this, then I'm doing the same encoding, like smashing the two coordinates together again to say, give me uh, A times 1,000 plus B, otherwise give me NA. So let's just, before we two call that, let's take that piece out, uh, come down to the end and see what that looks like. So now we're saying, like from the starting cell, I can go left by up to six, or I can go up one and then left by up to five, or up two and left by up to five, or up three and left by up to five, or up four and left by up to four. So the, these are the all of the valid uh, sort of vectors along which I can travel from a starting point. Um, so then you need to find a way to overlay, overlay that on the map, but also in a way that respects boundaries. And this is where the thing about um, about these coordinates, like having a, a list of them, is is very helpful. So. Anyway, so then we flatten that, uh, change that to Deers, flatten that out, uh, and these are all the sort of vectors you can travel along. Then uh, this piece here is just converting, um, do, 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 let's just grab this. We're text splitting that, multiplying the first piece by a thousand, the second piece by one, uh, and then summing them. So that gives me my the sort of vector of my starting position, which is row 23, column 17. And then I will add to that all of these. So that's that's my starting point. And I'm going to add to that each valid direction. And that's going to give me a list of addresses. These are the addresses on the map or theoretically not on the map that I could reach. So for example, if this was, if I was starting in column one, say, uh, then you would get some points here that are not on the map. So you've got, you know, minus... 4,900, blah, blah, blah. Well, the first cell on the map is 1,001. Uh, so that doesn't make sense, but that's okay because we're going to validate them by mapping them against our list of cities anyway. So then we take uh, our list of addresses, we look it up in the list of cities with their compressed coordinates, uh, give us back our list of cities. Uh, sorry, give us back our list of or was I even looking up city names? Uh, and then again, many of these won't be a match. And so, well, let's just do it without the two call for a sec. Um, down to the end. So you get NA, 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 Waterbury, NA, 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 Sunville, Mid Junction, Northwood. Uh, and so then we wrap all that in a two call to say, okay, these are the actual cities we we can get to, and then it's pretty straightforward from there. You can look that up to figure out the population, you can look that up to figure out the uh, life expectancy at birth, and then you just take a weighted average of the two. Okay, so that's what happened there. Uh, then the bonuses, aside from bonus five, I think were kind of straightforward. Highest average household income, I just did it by a straight filter, state with the most cities, uh, just a group by or pivot table or whatever. Um, the row with the highest population, uh, I did this with a kind of vaguely fancy by row, uh, but you didn't have to. You could just, you know, do an X lookup with if error zero, do a sum. Anyway, that's nothing much to say about that. Nothing much to say about this one. That was pretty pretty simple. This one is interesting. Um, so how do you think about cities that are close to a water tile? So one option 
uh, would be to say, it says you had to be horizontally or vertically adjacent. So with this kind of coordinate setup, one option would be to say, well, directly above would be minus 1,000, directly to the left would, be, uh, would not be minus 2, it would be minus 1, uh, directly to the right would be 1, and directly below would be 1,000. So then we could say, um, anyway, uh, you could say, if I insert four rows here, you could say this plus this list of possible directions. These are all the four squares that are adjacent to each one of these. And then again, from that in the same way as before, you could split out the row and the column. And then you still need to tag, obviously convert the color into data that you can work with, but then you could figure out which ones of those are water uh, and then filter your list of cities on that. But since I already had a kind of flexible setup uh, that would take you know, the whole list of things that was in here, uh, I thought the easier thing would just be to, is a, you, you probably heard me say, I'll make a copy. No, actually, I don't want to make a copy of the map. And the, the reason for that is because I realized it would be better to actually just add the water to this list here. So now instead of having whatever 133 cities, I've got 133 cities and 150 odd uh, water units. But then I can say, okay, I've got the distance between every pair of these, which means among other things, I've got the distance between every city and every unit of water. And so I can say, how often is the distance one? Because vertical or horizontal will be one. If if there's any diagonal, it'll be at least square root of two. So where the distance is one and where it's water. Uh, so that let me filter to, these are the things that are adjacent to water. Obviously with my expanded list, many of those were water, uh, but then some of them were just the cities. And then from there, you could say, okay, this is the income per person, this is the population, and then th this is the weighted average. So that's it. A happy, uh, happy, successful day. Although you know this, uh, this you know cool cucumber here was uh, was not taking part. So who's to say that he wouldn't have finished it in fifteen minutes as he sometimes does? Um, but uh, it's always it's always nice to come out on top, even if Andrew is not there. Um, I guess curious if you find this kind of appended bit at the end helpful. I'm conscious it makes the video quite a bit longer, uh, but on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> Someone in the comments on the video today said, trying to get better at Excel by watching Dim's videos would be like trying to learn about my health by watching a, a surgeon perform open heart surgery. Um, you know, too many, too many steps to cover in between. So this is certainly not, you know, several years of pre-med and several years of grad school and, and a residency, but maybe the explanations make it a little easier to figure out what the heck I was doing uh, I was definitely conscious as I was doing level seven that if you haven't seen some of these, kind of like some of Bo's techniques for the combined rows and columns, it would be very hard to tell what I was even attempting here. So if you find it helpful, let me know. I'm curious. Uh, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.